You yeah, can't. I'm just going off the schizophrenic <laughs> halfway through and just got his put on another. <laughs> Good stuff. Welcome back. We're straight out of Kabul with Lord Miles, devout British Catholic and hater, professional hater and cheetahs wearer here with my co-host Yara. How are you? I'm good. I'm looking forward to this interview. <laughs> Miles, how are you? How does it feel to be out of Afghanistan and into Britannistan? Well, it's it's very scary because it's very dangerous here. I'm going back to Afghanistan next week. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the GDI is service inviting me back on a lovely holiday. So it should be good, you know, uh, just kind of networking the Taliban. You have typical nine to five stuff. That we right. Call- networking with the Taliban. Typ- yeah, okay. as you do, to be fair. You know, if you're not right. kind of networking with the Taliban, I don't really want you in my DMs. You know what I mean? It's like right. the whole class of life. Yeah. Yeah. At least you're like an open book. This is good. So I like the honesty. So before <laughs> traveling to Afghanistan, why don't you take us through your... Um, ridiculous mental processes to get you to <laughs> Kazakhstan and the Taliban because we do know and I'm going to totally route you route you out to our listeners that you were in Ukraine please pull up the glamour shot oh my god <laughs> <laughs> so, a very sultry oh, um, so smoldering man. kind of man in uniform so what is all that about Oh, thank you. I, I once had hair, so, you know, with the e-boy look, uh, it really pulled goals. And goals like a guy in uniform, so I just lobbed for a day. Uh, it was quite fun. I kind of put on a putting mask once, 
and went to the front lines before the war broke out, wearing that Ukrainian uniform and just took a selfie because you could see the Russians about half a mile away. And I thought that was rather funny. They didn't shoot me because they were cowards, of course. Well, I mean, they're um, not going to shoot Putin, and I'm sure you looked just like him. Exactly. They're like, whoa, Putin's on the other side? Damn. Yeah. He's, he's really <laughs> building bridges. <laughs> <laughs> so you're in Ukraine. Didn't you go to Chernobyl while you were in Ukraine? I've been there like three times now. I just keep going because it's just easy. And I keep selling um, nuclear uh, nuclear material just to on eBay to other countries and stuff. Not like uranium and stuff. I, I did a physics degree and you've got a bunch of autistic man children that want to buy this stuff from Chernobyl. You know what I mean? You know those types of people who are professors are 40 years old and they have they have no wife or assets, but they think, oh, geez, I need to buy another... Um, object from Chernobyl to show my class lovely um that's what I did but right in the beginning I was a very humble investment banker you know every day as you do and then I decided to pop down to uh Afghanistan before I started my big kind of career change at that point after university and then the fall of Kabul happened around me you know as it casually does it happens to the best of us in times totally logical to go there three days before the collapse by the way no one could have seen it coming um and then instead of just running away with my pants on fire I just started chilling with the Taliban then chilling with the SAS and just chatting and then I just was like peace guys gotta get out and took a, an evacuation flight out and it was a lovely holiday to be fair kind of got a taste for it got some online fame and had newspapers offering me for help 20 grand just for a story just for me to get so rambled to them and well, I thought to myself you don't strike yeah. me as the type of person to take that offer but yeah exactly I should have asked for more but um exactly it, too exactly. well yeah, exactly. It's it's like it's so funny because all these journalists they think they're doing good work, and then you know they they just fund my next travels after bitching about my travels. It's really a <laughs> abusive cycle. It's true, but I've I've created this thing where I collude with journalists, where we just lie. I lie to them and they lie to me, saying, "Oh, you're gonna write good stuff about you." And I said, "Yeah, I'm only gonna tell you good stuff," and then I just tell them the most terrible stuff. And they just write an article about it. They get easy clicks because they're saying idiot tourist does X, Y, Z. Um, and then I get a bunch of people funneled to my social media and money taken to my accounts. So it's just a win-win for everyone apart from the general public with you know, 9 percent <laughs> population. So that's good base media. I'm just kind of globalist, Maxine, you know? <laughs> So, but the, the general public doesn't know that they're being victimized. So it's it's like a victimless, victimless crime. Everybody's winning. <laughs> Go tell anyone if anyone's watching. You know, keep this secret yourself, guys. <laughs> don't, don't, yeah, don't let the Zionists find out about this one. <laughs> oh my God! Don't say Zionists; they're all gonna come. You, you can't say it. We, well, we've said it twice. We can't say it another we, time. Yeah, okay. Yeah, sure. we, we get, we'll be vanished. So, uh, yeah, I know a little bit about. Um, <laughs> please tell our listeners how you created a company, made yourself an employee. And gave yourself a visa, just in case anybody else wants to know. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> when I wanted to go to South Sudan, as you do, lovely new holiday destination, we all want to go to like Spain or, you know, Canada or whatever. Yeah, I was like, yeah, I'm going to pop down to South Sudan, see what's going on there. Watch like five minutes of YouTube on it. Let's see what I need to do. And I saw it was like $2,000 for a uh, tour guide. And I thought, why do I need a tour guide? That's ridiculous. <laughs> and you can do it on a business trip. But the business must be justified, for example, a tourism agency. So I was like, oh, crap, I'm going to go on the UK government website, set up a uh, company and commit fraud. So I just uh, I just set up uh, Routledge uh, Tourism Limited or something like that. And then I went to the uh, embassy in London. And to be fair, it's not a busy embassy. You know, no one wants to do anything with South Sudan. It's like it's like the uh, awkward kid that gets picked last for uh you know, in gym class or whatever to partner up with. So I walk in and with a suit and I go, oh, hello there. I'm running a tourism agency and I want to give myself a tour to test out my own skills, you know. I want to keep myself <laughs> safe. And I was like, I want to keep myself oh my safe. And I want, you know, I want to make sure I'm safe and I want to look after myself and give myself a good time. You know what I mean? Uh, so they, they were like, you want to give yourself a tour? I'm like, yeah. Here's a letter. It's it's all in print font. It's it's very good. And first letter, I took a piss. So it wasn't an official document with a logo and signature. It was just an A4 piece of paper saying, hello, a CEO of uh, whatever Global Tours Limited. I will give myself a tour. Thanks. Ha <laughs> ha. Signed, 
CEO. And he said, we need something more official than this. And I go, you know what? I'm going to go to company headquarters, the cafe around the corner. And I'm going to do the official logo myself. So I went on Photoshop and just created a logo. It was just, it was just I don't know. I think it was the Enron logo. Plus, like, some editing. Because I thought it would be funny. And then, <laughs> and then I just came back a bit later and I signed it. And they were like, wow, this looks very good. Thank you for this. And I was like, yeah, sorry about this. Last minute, you know, I have so much company business. Uh, I just had to put this together. They were like, no problem. We understand. We we always want business in South Sudan. I'm like, well, I wonder why you're not getting it. So I signed <laughs> it over. Got my visa. And then um, and then that was kind of tough. Um, the other thing that I haven't talked about before, actually, when I was leaving South Sudan, turns out after two days of being in the country, got read to yourself at a police station or something. Uh, I hadn't done that. So in about day seven, I got to the airport and he said, what is this? Where is your, where is your permission? And I go, oh, I gave myself permission. I'm a tour agent. And he's like, who do you do the tours through? I'm like, for myself. And they're like, this is impossible. I'm like, my friend, it is not impossible. You do not understand the business. And I was <laughs> And, he, and then he said, we do not care. Uh, you need to get the official document. And I said, okay, my friend, I can give you the official document. Let's go in the back. I gave him like $20. He was like, thank you for this official document. You are clear to go on the flight back home. I go, okay. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Him, you just throw bribes anywhere as long as it's not. Yo, I, I bought my, uh, straight up, I bought my driver's license in South Africa. And then I just <laughs> transferred it to a UK one. Still have it. Can't drive for shit. It's <laughs> easy. Oh, my God. They're all criminals. <laughs> Yeah, it's so yeah, easy. That's me insane. That's incredible. I like that. You yeah. know, super simple Honestly, stuff. Yeah, just like there's so loopholes in the world. Like in Afghanistan, you can go drink driving. By the way, it's not technically illegal because alcohol is illegal. So if you find a way to get drunk before you get to Afghanistan, then jump in a car. You see what I mean? You it's guys are both <laughs> full of all of these great travel tips. We're gonna have to do a specific episode on Yara and Miles's travel tips. To put to together a, an entire <laughs> book to give to people. How do you to find that? Do system. you just purposely? Because we were, I was, we were reading about one, uh, one guy that w waits until there's natural disasters or terrorist attacks. Yes. And then, is that you as well? <laughs> I know. That guy, yeah. I'm looking. I'm looking at what's happening in Gaza, and Gaza's being turned to Zaza right now. And I'm just looking at that, and I'm thinking, damn, that's a cheap flight. I wonder why. You know, I'm opening a tab right now, having a look. I'm like, twenty dollars straight to Tel Aviv. They'll love me there. I've got some IDF friends that are like, Miles, pop down, please. We need propaganda. I'm like, no, nah, I'm good, man. Um, I'm really, I really am tempted. I mean, if if an earthquake happens in say uh, some country, you can just pop down. And you can get like free bricks and stuff and build your own house out of a rubble. Just a smaller house. <laughs> I do know, I do know somebody that did that in Qatar. They went and got a bunch of free bricks and built like this huge villa. It was yes. fantastic. <laughs> you can just buy it, buy a house in, in Italy or Greece for like one pound and then exactly. the whole thing. Is that so that's so, a good deal for you. Like I might have to find that the pound. I'm really struggling at the moment, but I'll figure it out, you know. Um, You'll figure it out. I'll help you. I'll give you 50p. If you guys oh, have please. any pounds, please give leave tips for Miles. Thank you. Yeah, please, please pound me up, guys. Thank you. You're um, lying, though, because the hotels in Afghanistan, you said, were like $11 a night, right? You said uh, it's cheaper. Yeah, than but I was, I was, I created this thing. So I, I basically did a 2008 economics thing where I created a thing called Miles Life Insurance Backed Securities. And I lent it out to banks and financed myself until I hedged myself in a risky triple A uh, class asset. And then I basically caused like uh, the, another global recession. Uh, and now I'm broke. So it's, it's you know, it happens to the best of us. Um, so I'm I, really I interested. Was the was uh, the hotel yeah. treatment over there? Was it like a travelodge, or, or what? What would the British akin be to that? Yeah, so it, travel lodge sucks. To be honest, if if you go to travel lodge, I think you just it's more like a Mandarin Oriental. What kind of hotel are we talking yeah. about here? Some of the hotels I go to in Afghanistan are really nice. So. You pay, well, sometimes you pay $50 a night and it's a full compound hotel and they x-ray you before coming in. I'm like, do you ACA tumors from stress? And they're like, not yet, sir. I'm like, lovely. <laughs> uh, you head in, there's tropical gardens and there's peacocks walking around. And there's UN staff just giving you dirty looks because they know who you are. But then you realize they're earning 20 grand a year because they're UN staff and they're not actually doing any good work. So you just laugh at them. And then um, and then you get food poisoning from the... Uh, Turns out prawns and shrimp in Afghanistan aren't the freshest. So yeah. um, 
Yeah, mm-hmm. I've got food poisoning like four times now in total. I just should stop eating the. Uh, it's because you're a Brit. Because you're a Brit, that's why you guys. Get Where are you from? With everything. Just I'm from stick, Argentina. So just stick Argentina. To your oh, you've got great banking systems. I've heard. You know how the whole. <laughs> You, you got the Falklands. You have those islands that just off your coast. Oh my god! It should be yeah, no, we're Not we're at, we're right after oh. Turkey, so right up there, number one, man, number one. It's Is that pretty I awesome? Never Argentina. been number one at anything. No, I want to number go to one in places. I want to go to Argentina. My great German grandfather, he's a war hero, apparently. <laughs> Argentina, one point with tons oh of gold. and like he speaks, he's really good to be fair. But he says I like, have to go there and see her. I'm like, that sounds great to be fair. Um, I do want to go to Patagonia at some point though, just to kind of, you, you know, uh, if, if that's my retirement plan. If I kind of get uh, wanted by um, NATO or whatever at some point, you know how. Yeah, you know, the only people who go to Patagonia are tourists because we can't afford it in Argentina. So <laughs> you'll find great. you'll find other other fellow Brits down there. Yeah, I, I'm really committing uh, citizenship fraud in Argentina. Do you recommend it? No, uh, we don't want more Brits in our country. You guys already uh, took part half of it. Well, I won't be a Brit if I become Argentinian. Think about it. So you, so you get to Kabul or you get to Afghanistan and then the evacuation starts. So how is this like entire awful debacle like before yes. your eyes? Yeah, so I'm just walking down the street, sipping a coffee from, I don't know, um, I don't know, some coffee shop. It wasn't Starbucks, but it was bloody good. And it cost a lot less. And then I suddenly see a lot of people running. And I'm thinking, wow, really, Carlio's caught on here. And then I realize, oops, there's something going on. And some guy comes up to me and goes, hey, um, the Taliban have put out like a social media post saying, if you don't surrender, we're just going to take the place by force. Lol. And I'm just there like, oh, who could have seen this coming? Apart from everyone, but everyone was denying it because you know the media. I believe the media at one point. <laughs> Imagine that. And then, so I saw people running towards the banks. And the day before, I couldn't withdraw two hundred dollars from the central bank in the center of Kabul, you know, the main one. So these people are trying to withdraw their life savings that they've built up from you know working <laughs> with the Americans or whatever. And they're just they're just screwed. I just see a bank rush that's really failing. And I'm just sitting back drinking my coffee. Then I realize, oh, I might be in danger. Oopsie. So I hail down a taxi. I, I go, you know, take me to the airport right now. And I, at first I go to the embassy, but they've moved out like 22 hours before they were meant to. So, you know, you know how government people are just lying about timing and everything. First <laughs> they're time usually the airport, late, though. They're never early. So I'm Yeah, surprised. exactly. I'm like... Oh, I really appreciate that. And I see that people are taking sofas out of the embassy. I'm like, I respect it, to be fair. It's the British aren't coming back for a while. So, yeah, free furniture. <laughs> I should have started my furniture flipping services back then, but, you know, I wasn't thinking long term. Anyway, I'm, I'm on the way to the airport. I'm like 10, 10 15 minute drive away. And then I, I try, I go on my phone. I'm trying to buy a uh, ticket. And then my bank declines for $800, you know, flights out. I'm like, this isn't a good time, you know. Uh, it's flagged up because it's just coming from Afghanistan. So I call up customer services and it's some it's some Indian person speaking to me. And they're like, oh no, so how are you? I'm like, Taliban coming. I'll block my <laughs> fucking car, you retard. <laughs> fucking our worst possible time, wanker. And they're like, I'm sorry to hear you're having trouble, sir. Can I ask for your security code? And I'm like, yeah, I'm like 4751-3301-6292-1970. That's actually my card number, by the way. So I'll just dox myself. I'm going to cancel it right now. But um. Yeah, I don't give a shit. Like, there's like twenty dollars in there. I don't care. Um, and then in the end, I get to the airport, and the flight gets cancelled anyway. So I call up, um, I call up Bindi and lady. I'm like, yeah, all good, no problem, haha. <laughs> and she's like, oh, have a lovely holiday. I'm like, you didn't listen to a word I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> Trying to get off this holiday, please yeah. help me. Exactly. And then everyone at this point on social media was saying, "Miles, stay at the airport." And I go, I need to, I need to go against the grain right here. So I'm gonna go away from the airport i see a bunch of white people walking so i start going towards their direction but i'm obviously not uh back to back with them then some two tally bros come up to me and they corner me and they go you know what are you doing here who are you uh, are you are you media are you uh are you um soldier i'm like i'm miles and they're like, <laughs> they're like yeah i'm like i'm lord miles they're like who is this i'm like it's me my friend they're like passports and they say you are british and they look disgusted so i'm like oh bad relations i get that i can't say with boris that's suspicious as hell who does this stuff so i go i'm from well wales my friends you know see up here united kingdom that includes wales and they're like what is wales i go oh no i go one struggle brother wales was invaded by england 
<laughs> we, we have we we we're the same. You know, you you got invaded. I got invaded. One struggle, brother. I'm just right. I'm just trying to move off. I'm trying to enjoy myself. Screw the Brits, right? Screw the Brits. And they're like they're like, what's in Wales? I was like, just loads of sheep, just like loads of farmers. Mm-hmm. Same like rural Afghanistan, my dude. One struggle, and they're like. Okay, fair enough. Whatever, just just enjoy yourself. Uh, and then I get released, and I'm like, bloody hell, I was okay. And then I go to this big compound. There's a bunch of people swarming it. You know, there's guards everywhere forcing people back. And I just go, oh, excuse me, British passport. He <laughs> he. I go to the front, and there's a, there's a I think it was a Greek guy, or I think a Turkish guy. It could be one way around. We'll just say Greek guy. And he goes, uh, he goes, you know. Uh, what what are you doing here? No, it's only for Greeks only at the moment. We're only accepting EU citizens. And I go, wait a minute, my friend, I'm not Turkish. <laughs> and don't worry. And they go, ha, that guy's all right. Come on in. So he just let me in on like a really cheesy joke. You know, it's like you just tell um people of a certain race that you're not the other race that they hate and they think it's funny. They're like, he's so one of us. Come on in. First thing the British government does is give me a Wi-Fi password uh, and then my room. So I started live streaming the entire thing. Uh, it goes lovely. Uh, my uni tries to cause trouble for me and I tell them, hey, I say, hey, I just throw a mental health card. I go, hey guys, I know I'm live streaming the fall of Kabul and making comments on Israel at this point and the validity of that country. So, but mental health. So uni, you can't do anything to me. Mental health card, guys. That's so true. I go, I go, ah, geez, guys. Mental health. Ah, help me. And they just, they don't cause me any troubles. I'm not kicked out of uni straight away. So good stuff. And then, and then I uh, meet up with some SAS guys. They just come back from an operation. They come back and go, you're that fucking British guy. I'm like, all right, mate. And they go, you want to come drinking with us? We think you're hilarious. We'll take a picture for the wife. So I, I haven't drank alcohol up to this point in my life. And these British, you know, soldiers, the most elite soldiers in England, uh, just upstairs with me, handing me some uh, some shots. I'm like, oh, this is the one time to have it, you know. And we're eating Pringles and we're just chilling. And they're like, yeah, this is less alcohol in Afghanistan. I'm like, okay. And then he just started giving me guns and stuff. And these are obviously ex SAS contractors, so they're not active SAS. So you know, they're not in trouble or anything. They start giving me their gun and body armor, their shit face. And they just taking photos. They're like, ha, it's pretty funny. We just dressed a random civilian in <laughs> um, military armor. Ha. And then, you know, I'm just left to my own devices. I'm live streaming. I'm watching people falling from the planes, like from outside mm-hmm. as I'm drinking my coffee. I'm like, you know, it's like not a great idea, you know? And then, and then at one point to get evacuation flight out, I'm, I'm, I'm one of the last flights. I made that done on purpose. I wasn't on one of the flights that has all the Afghans in. It was exclusively for foreigners. So I didn't take a seat off anyone. I didn't do anything immoral. I just was like, hey, I'm goofing off. And then as I'm about to take off, I get a signal on my phone because I connect to another Wi-Fi network, of course. And it says, oh, congratulations. Uh, you technically had travel insurance through uh, our booking services. Here's like you know, a few hundred pounds. Uh, so I'm like, wow, I profited off this flight i profited off this trip amazing literally it was a free holiday but how did you get how did we get from there to custody because i followed it well i followed the kabul saga and then it was like every of course it was like he's dead guys he's dead so everybody's (laughs) mourning the passing of miles and i'm like but then the twitter post i was like well that's clearly not his language but people were like he's dead for like months so how did we get I, there's no scientific evidence I can physically die in a, apart from anywhere of North Central Island. There's no back study. Like, it's not true. The only thing that's dying is my hairline. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm doing just fine, guys. Honestly, if anyone believes that I'm dead, they do not know me. I'm I'm delusionally optimistic. I've got plot armor. I, I'm like tin tin at this point. I think I'm I think I'm just losing my mind mentally because I just I, I kind of kind of wish I want to die at this point. I think it's an elaborate suicide attempt. It's just not working out, is it? God has a great sense of humor. Anyway, I so think the I, fact that you're challenging death is going to make it harder for you to die in a way. Like <laughs> like plus we're westerners, right? So westerners are like Taliban I've been told to be very very scared so what was it like like hanging out with the Taliban and where can I get a pair of cheetahs oh I'll send you some 
no problem. But um, what happened was there was about I total in total I've done five trips to Afghanistan as you do. So you just pop down five times in two years, uh, for business. So second time I popped down, I think, oh damn, I need to meet the Taliban, and everyone's like, Miles, you can't do stuff for money. Money is not does not make you happy in the world. It's all about your safety. I'm like. Oh boo hoo! Okay, terrible. <laughs> um, so I popped down, and I was like, I was like, okay, I'm not gonna like engage with the Taliban. I'm just gonna like you know observe them from far off, see what's up. I, I had one of the first ever tourism visas for the new government, so I was like, you know, I'm gonna tread carefully here. I was actually quite nervous. Um, so first night I arrived from Pakistan, and I arrive in a hotel, and I have the key pass, uh, the badge, the lanyard from my old trip. So I walk in this hotel, it's the dead of night, and he let me in, then I'm surrounded by Taliban. I'm like, Guh? wrong hotel. Turns out the area, the hotel got abandoned and converted into like a Taliban base. So I just wandered into a Taliban base, oh and they're like, you're a tourist, my friend? I was like, yeah, I don't like come watch cricket with us and eat some naan. I'm like, hell yeah, brother. So I walk in, I'm just goofing with the Taliban, taking some photos, we're watching TV, we start taking selfies. Um, I give them the movie Black Hawk Down. They're like, oh, we know this movie, this is chill, man. Thanks for a high quality download. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> I'm like, thanks, thanks for the naan. Can I give you like any any money? Like I know you, you know the economy is a little bit screwed. They're like, now nah, man's on us, brother. And I, I kind of slip some money underneath a pillow so they you know it's not awkward or anything. But so I you were help. like this Brit weird British tooth fairy that came to Afghanistan for the Taliban. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean you know how British people are with their terrible teeth, so we want to get rid of it. <laughs> I, didn't mean that. I like that metaphor, but who says simile? I have no idea. Um, good stuff. Um, yeah, you so might I'm have single-handedly to... fixed relations between yeah. the UK and Afghanistan. Well, that's what I'm trying to do at the moment. This is not only on my second trip. So when I walk out as well, um, I start seeing they have these Taliban headbands for sale mm -hmm. and all these other Taliban merch. And I think, okay, are they sanctioned against this stuff? I looked it up, it's no. No. Okay, is this stuff... <laughs> Oh, hell yes. I'm like, but that's going to give me media attention. That's hilarious. So I find the most controversial thing I could buy. And it's a rug depicting 9-11. And it's like, um, basically, newspapers uh, weren't a common thing in Afghanistan in 2001. So to explain to the locals what mm -hmm. happened with 9-11, they made rugs. Because when they're hung out outside um, to dry, people can just see them and see the image depicted. That's so I'm like, I'm gonna buy, a, I'm gonna buy like ten nine eleven rugs for thirty dollars and sell them for five hundred dollars each. And then I bought the headbands for dirt cheap, sold them in mass. But I got them reprinted instead of saying like jihad because that's not allowed in England. I reprinted them in the local language to say live, love, laugh. So when I got stopped at <laughs> the airport on the way back, they were like, oh, this is not allowed, Miles. This is extremist material. I was like, aren't just Taliban allowed to live, love, laugh? Uh, Mr. MI6 fed. <laughs> <laughs> and he had to call in a translator and deal with it. It was hilarious. I was just sitting there with my shit eating grin, like, oh, I'm so cocky right now. Um, no one could stop me. I and mean, then, of course, on my fifth trip, someone did stop me. So after going back and forth for Taliban, <laughs> I was thinking, I was thinking, ah, I need to, I need to really outdo myself. You know, I watched a few movies and I, I, I saw this movie called Gold from 2016. And I did the common thing of, he's so me. So I just popped down to Afghanistan with a few friends who were doing PhDs. And I was like, hey, we're going to open a gold mine in Afghanistan. Um, so I went to some ministers. We had some meetings. And then at one point, we got arrested. Uh-oh. Um, so this was about eight months ago now. Nine, nine months ago, I got arrested on the road between Jalalabad and Kabul. I took out $1,000 from Western Union to pay for my house in Afghanistan. So I've got a house in Afghanistan, as you do. Um, okay. You know, just renting it out, it's cheaper in a hotel, and to be fair, like, uh, I like cooking my own food, more traditional like that, you know, I'm a traditional man with a traditional house in Afghanistan, as you do. Brits, Brits um, can't cook, so why do you need a kitchen? Or did you learn how to cook while you were out? I'm actually, I'm actually, I'm, I'm very, I'm very good at cooking, and baking, so I think one day we should have a cook-off in Afghanistan, you're formally invited, I can get you a letter <laughs> from from the Taliban government, this is an official invitation, if you do back out, you are acknowledging I can cook. 
So I'm very I'll sorry. go to Afghanistan, but the last I saw a little documentary about a woman in Afghanistan, and they were like, "You can do whatever you want, but you have to wear pink the whole time to designate because she was riding across the country on a motorcycle." And they were like, "If you're going to be in a motorcycle, you have to wear pink to designate that you're a woman." So she has like a pink bike and a pink helmet, and she's like <laughs> riding through the deserts of Afghanistan, and everybody's so stopping her, like, "What are you doing?" Yes, yeah, I think you should go, but I just think you you definitely shouldn't eat that food. It's dust to me. Well, he said not to eat the prawns. So I no, think no, don't eat his food. Is oh, what I'm food. saying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I would never. I would never eat British food. That's crazy. I wonder what 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 do you cook? What is it? Beans and toast. No, no, no. Well, Russians eat nothing, you know. So that's all good. Um, also. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I can cook, well, first I can bake very well, so I do this triple layer brownie, where the bottom is incredibly moist, has different <laughs> chunks inside. Oh, it's a moist brownie. What are you I saying? hate that, that word. I'm very mature, and you guys are immature with these. these no, you're, this is just really gay, listening to you describe your, your triple layer brownie. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. Hey, if you put on your strap on, and we go at it, <laughs> is that gay? <laughs> Just give me the other two layers at this point. I'm invested. Let's go. Yeah, I mean, the two <laughs> layers are us, babe. Anyway, um, <laughs> so basically, um, hopefully, oh, I would have cream cheese at one point. So, cream cheese mixed with mascarpone cheese and double cream as well. If you mix that all together with a little bit of sugar and vanilla extract, it goes very well. And then I have a chopped thin chocolate layer, which I had some fudge on and marshmallows. Let's just say it's the best brownies you've ever had. It's got 25 ingredients and it's kind of made and broke some dates at some point. I made people jealous. I think I'm going to start a war over it one day. I'm very determined to start a war. I want to go down with history books even more. But um. Where do you think you're going to be able to start a war over brownies? Because I can only think of the only nation that's going to really get upset about you claiming that you have the best brownies is going to be the United States. Well, there's a lot of brownies in the UK. So if they all get deported, we'll see how it goes either way. Um, the UK you know, would also get upset, uh, Sarah, for sure. Oh, they do brownies there too? I had no idea. I'm yeah, not speaking about these... food. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm speaking about... Uh, never mind. But yeah, we can, we can do the US, uh, <laughs> North America... <laughs> Uh, I've used some other countries to be fair. Wait, well, what do you think I was saying? You think I was saying so? Well, that's really racist of you to insinuate. Yeah. But I'm so food, and you're wow. Well, you're wow. the one talking oh, about brownies. I just realized I put myself in your dodgy mindset. Terrible, terrible. You guys, <laughs> I, I'm I'm all about diversity. You you guys are insane. Apparently, yeah. Apparently, twenty five ingredients. Sure, diversity. Yeah, of course. You know, it's it's, it's all a melting pot. So, who took over the Twitter account while you were in custody? It was a friend of mine, but uh, his thing, I didn't know it was happening. So I would have supervised calls to my friends and they would call me go, Miles, do you have clean water? I'm like, yeah, I've got Pepsi. I've got like Dr. Pepper. <laughs> but to be fair, I don't really like this Mountain Dew. It tastes funny. I got chai. I've got like, you know, I've got my own dedicated little cup. Yeah, it's all good. And they're like, all right. And they're like, Miles, you have a book for entertainment. Can you write on paper? And I was like, yeah, I got my laptop. I'm streaming movies with the Taliban. We're playing Team Fortress 2. It's pretty chill, to be fair. And they're just like, oh, he's oh, he's obviously under duress to say something. When I got out the foreign office and all my friends put my ha their hands on my shoulders and said, Miles, it's okay. I understand what you must have gone through. Oh, Miles. I feel so sorry for you. Are you okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm going back in three weeks, mate. Lovely holiday. You know, right. Yeah, so it, then it like, it what, is, what's it, what is custody like then? What does it even mean? If it, we were talking to the yeah, Twitter. What's the day to like, day? Yeah. So, what's it? Yeah. Oh, I think I was more productive in Taliban prisons. So it was a lovely little tech retreat. But basically, it depends on what you do. So there were two British men that were convicted of espionage. Now, to work in intelligence, you must have intelligence. So they concluded, I'm not an intelligent fella, you know? They, they were like, is Miles a smart fella or is he a fart smeller? And they put me down as like a fart smeller, you know? Right. Yeah, yeah. So they were like, okay, Miles isn't clearly working in intelligence, but he didn't have a permit to visit uh, this mountain, this gold, this gold mine area. So, you know, minimum sentence, good treatment. You know, it's like a minimum security jail compared to maximum security. So minimum security is like, we think you're someone dodgy, but you made an honest mistake. It happens. We probably think you're fine, but we we will want to keep you happy anyway. Maximum security is like, yeah, you're you're a spy. You've murdered someone, some espionage, something like that. So for me, I was sitting in a guest house. It wasn't actual prison, so it was a normal house. 
And it, when you get arrested with things, you're that's given back to you. So because I got arrested with over a thousand dollars, they were like, "Hey, Miles, here's this stack of Afghan money." And I was like, <laughs> "I was like, I was like, thanks, my dude. Lovely. Muskinista means no problem." That's the one. That's the uh, one saying you must say in Afghanistan jail. Muskinista. It means no problem. Even if you have a problem, you say you have no problem. <laughs> It goes a far way. It goes. It goes a long way. It's it's a real ironic thing people say in Afghanistan. It's great. Um, so day to day, I would wake up. My tally bros would give me breakfast in bed. So I'd wake up on like a really cushy, nice bed. But it's like a it's like a it's like a mattress on the floor type situation. But everyone lives like that. It's chill. And I get eggs in the morning, two or three eggs. I'm enjoying it. They've mixed it with some uh, tomatoes. So I'm I'm eating really well because it's better than British food. So I'm like. Nice stuff, guys. And I wake up and I kind of go on my laptop whilst I'm eating. I like to listen to music, so I listen to ABBA, maybe System of the Down, uh, mm-hmm. stuff like that. So, do the, got... do the Taliban like ABBA or System of the yeah. Down? Yeah, so I play them a little bit of ABBA. Say, so I play me some Taliban music, it's like the ooh, uh, ooh, I've uh, been some song, <laughs> some singing over it. I was like, hey, straight up, can you listen to some of my music? Would that be okay? Like, I know you guys are funny about music, but. Do you want to see what it's like, I guess? And they were like, okay, sure, why not? And they were like, it's catchy, but we're not going to listen to it. Uh, We like it, but we're not going to listen to it because obviously it's against our religion. I was like, fair enough, mate. But they do like ABBA and System of a Down. Um, I managed to get, I managed to find like a vocal only version of some music, uh, some heavy metal music. So we would listen to that whilst working out together. Oh, so in the morning, I had some weights with me. We would, uh, we would just work out. So some of the guys were quite lean. Um, from just you know eating just rice and being the mountains and stuff so we would just work out together uh whilst watching some youtube video on uh you know gym or stuff like that and they were chill with it they got into the routine some of them gained a little bit of weight i too i gained too much weight i was too comfortable in the prison um it was a lovely holiday by about midday i would uh i would go into the other room with the other uh, prisoners they weren't rest with any money and uh, they were chill to be fair um we used to watch movies together, so we would watch Titanic. I had movies with ten pence for market from USB. So I watched Titanic with the Taliban. At first, they weren't interested. Then they were like, "Holy crap, this is a great story about love." And one of them actually started tearing up a little bit. Like you can see it in his eyes. He denied right. it. But yeah, but like he- they, they like they have all of that eyeliner, so don't they avoid crying at all costs? It's like it's like a ten percent of them thing have the eyeliner. You know what I mean? Uh, to be fair, it's why I've stopped using eyeliner. It's just not fashionable for West anymore. It's like why it's why I don't wear a push up bra or anything like that. It's just not my yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, so true. Yeah, why, why are you laughing? Is that is that? Is that she's awesome? laughing. I don't know what she's laughing. That's a serious I don't know. conversation. Yeah, I'm being hundred percent serious here. <laughs> Hit me up afterwards. Anyway, um, well, <laughs> what else too? Um, yeah, so I was just watching Rambo Free with the Taliban, and you know they saw. You know, themselves the Taliban in the video so they kind of soy face they went oh, that's us what <laughs> <laughs> we're in a movie I'm like I'm like yes brothers I'm like yeah you're you are dudes and they would chill with us if I had a bad day they would go to the market and buy me some crisps I was very happy with that because these guys obviously aren't rich definitely not by western standards of course mm-hmm. so they they sacrifice the money they've got for me they've got to put towards me which is very kind Every few days, there'll be a guy, I can't mention his name, but he would come over and say, hey, do you need any shampoo? Do you need uh, dental treatment? Do you need to see a doctor? Is there anything you do need? You know, because um, they can cover a lot of the basic stuff, like, you know, soap and all this stuff, but more specialized stuff for each person. Some people might need some certain medications. Some people uh, just might want cigarettes or, um, I can say the word fags because I'm in England. Yeah, they wanted fags. Fags, I love you, that word fag. Um, they would just... Sometimes, yeah, I want new clothes, I want new stuff. So we always got stuff we needed, no problems. Obviously, it wasn't a pure holiday. It was technically custody. So obviously, I wasn't allowed to start tweeting. I wasn't allowed to goof off too much. Um, you know, it was, it was solid. Um, I was allowed out to the market if I wanted to buy some specialized stuff. So if I went to the Taliban, I went, yeah, I want to buy like uh, like a Nintendo Switch. Um, I would have to go and show them what I'm looking for and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, one point, uh, one of the men, had a Nintendo Switch. I don't know why he had it, but apparently it was passing through his hands. He was delivering it to his friends. So we used to play Mario Kart for like an afternoon. With yeah, we, we were told. We they, we were told not to worry about you and that you had PlayStation and Switch. It was, we actually, like... it was actually an 
Xbox, to be fair. So I was very obsessed about that. I'm more of a PlayStation guy, but you got to adapt to the lifestyle. You kind yeah. of. Got, I mean, it's yeah. that's a really, really tough. That's yeah. a really tough uh, adaptation to make. I'm really sorry for you. No, thank you. Please don't make money. Super hard. Support. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, sounds great. Um, One pound but... coming your way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, to be fair, I'm not into the virtual stuff. We'll have to do in real life. Um, real life. Exchange. Um, anyway, what else? Um, yeah, they would. They were fine. My religion. They were like, you Catholic, and I was like, yeah. They were like, oh, can you tell us more details? Like, yeah, I follow Jesus. And they were like, oh, we believe he's this, but to be fair, you're Christian. We chill with us as long as you're not like an atheist. We we don't respect that too much. I'm like, yeah, I get that. One struggle, brother. <laughs> And it was chill. Um, they were chill with me praying. I was chill with them praying. He was just like, yeah, it was all right. Um, what else? The food was bloody good. The food was amazing, man. Um, well, I mean, you're from Britain. So, I mean, you t- saying that other food is good is like, what? of course it's good. Yeah, lovely. But where are you from again? Just remind me again. The Pacific Northwest. Northwest. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, lovely. At least in, at least in England, um, you know, we can stay a little bit. So that's quite good. Uh, you know, you know how Americans and Northwesterns are, you know, kind of like, no, no, at least we've got nice food. That's, that's... <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I live in like the curious. Britain of America. This is like Britain of America. It's like a okay. shithole and it has terrible weather. And, nice. and all your food is technically not yours. It's just stolen from other countries and then just Co- colonized or whatever. What's so, what's so bad about beasting on other countries? It's like we did what we did. It's like we did what they were doing better. You've got to think about this, Sarah. The national dish in the UK is... is, uh, is curry? 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 Yeah. 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 yeah, we do it better than uh, the other countries too. It's like, it's like <laughs> hey, this is, your, this is your prize dish. This is the thing that you put above all else. Ha, mine. Oh, we're going to do it better. <laughs> you <laughs> cool <laughs> it's like yo did you crack up afterwards when you started reading like what the daily mail and other tabloids had reported oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Your so story? the time i'm like obviously no internet usage miles naughty boy can't tweet but we could show you what's going on in the world if you want and I was seeing the news article saying, you know, Miles is dead, blah, blah, blah. And I was going to the Taliban, like, hey, do you think I'm dead? Huh? And we were just snickering together, like little schoolgirls. <laughs> it was great, man. I was like, oh, if they only knew I was just launched to Arabia laughing. It was, it was a fun time. I feel like it must have been, you know, something that, that upset them because they kind of, you know, the Daily Mail, these tabloids, they, they have this hatred for the Middle East. And so everything that they report is so Islamophobic. And then you going out there and just being like, hey, I'm, you know, being treated well and not they too bad. They hated it. it. They yeah, must have hated it. Yeah. Is that, hey, Joe Biden, my boy, hit me up. I'll, I'll, I'll fix your relations. Yeah. But um, <laughs> it, was, it was like, it was like, you know, I don't like people being Taliban phobic nowadays. You know, it's, I'm really, I'm really about um, equal rights and everything. So, when people are Taliban phobic, it really hits me. And most people aren't really aware about social issues like I am. I'm always about equality and all that. So when I saw Taliban phobic individuals like the Daily Mail just going mm-hmm. against them, it really made me sad. Like I saw the stuff, it was like, it was like secret police kidnap Miles. I'm like, nah, uh, intelligence agency arrests Miles formally. It's like, you know, you wouldn't say British secret police kidnap Miles. No, it's like MI6 took me because. I was laughing too much, you know. It's like you should you language. should charge them a, a lot of money. You should charge the Daily Mail a lot of money, and then just you know tell them that you're going to give them kind of inside secrets, your time with the Taliban, and then just you know tell them what you told us today. Oh, give them cool. give them the non recipe. Be like, this is the secret. Yeah, <laughs> you know, the yeah. yeah it's just like. This is this is the crusty crab mm-hmm. of Afghanistan. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. exactly. No, the thing is, too, a lot of journalists they don't like me. For all, I wonder why. Um, but <laughs> but it's got to the point where I've just started trolling them in, because at this point, they've, 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 <laughs> yeah. but the money's minuscule, like a few hundred pounds. I'm like, it's not really worth um, just dealing with BS. Mm-mm. So when I flew into, um, so I was flying home from Dubai with the British Foreign Office, and I called up my tabloid uh, contacts. I've got, I've got like a blacklist, like, mm-hmm. like I've got a list of journalists that have screwed me over, as in, they haven't paid me, or they said they would, 
or they just straight up lied. I don't mean like opinion articles saying bad stuff. I mean straight up lying, and they know they were lying because they're they're journalists, they're not humans. So I call them out. Call them out. Call them out. What media outlets? Oh, pretty much all of them. Uh, to be honest, every, uh, pretty much every single one. British was, media like, is the worst, though. Literally, British media yeah, yeah. is yeah. brutal. Embarrassment. Oh, yeah, but I, I have fun with it because I, I'm like Sam Hyde with the media. It's just fun. So I call them up and say, Shalom, my friend. Anyway, I'm, I'm flying back to Birmingham, my favorite city. Um, I'm going to land there. Hey, guys, if you want, if you want, like, pay me like $200, I'll give you a first exclusive. Uh, $200, I need cash quick. And you're my top guy. I know you are. I know you. We get on great. So be there with a camera. But I may be a few hours late because of debriefing and stuff, mental health checks. Because, you know, obviously I'm totally messed up from this situation. Totally. Um, But, like, I want you to wait there and you could get a great scoop. If anything, I'm really cutting you in. So are you in? They're like, yeah, Miles, of course. <laughs> and they think they screw me. So, of course, I don't fly into Birmingham. I fly into London. It's like a totally different city. And I keep them waiting there for like seven or eight hours, just trying to you know, extend them. I keep going, yeah, yeah, I'm coming out in like a little bit. Just just give me like another half an hour. It's really worth it. I've got more photos to show you. And I just keep them waiting there for ages and ages and ages until we eventually give up. One guy cash apps me and says, mm-hmm. I, want, I want money off you for my wasted time. And they go, oh, it's, it's like four hundred dollars, okay? And he's like, oh, oh, oh. Like that. <laughs> paycheck, the uh, the uh, liberal fuck. And um, I I send a request for him to pay me uh four hundred dollars, and he doesn't accept. Sadly, you know, that would be an epic troll. But it would be fraud. I would send it back instantly. I'll just take screenshots to post on Twitter. And then he sends me like this huge ranting long voicemail. Like like he's dating the head of the ADL or something like that um, about me, and I just I just sent one back and I I just said okay pay me five hundred dollars and I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> yeah. and he blocks me at this point so you're you're a journalist's the- worst nightmare I love you it. are thank you I actually I do I do write articles occasionally but it's just for you know, some media that I just think are chill um I like messing with journalists they're just they're just crazy like i met like as well i was coming back from romania and they said okay miles we need one exclusive of you we'll pay you uh what fifteen thousand pounds for first exclusive i'm like yeah okay what's involved talk to us for 30 minutes not on camera just we go all you record it and it goes work to to a transcript i think that's like thirty thousand dollars an hour hell yeah turn up and she goes (laughs) ah geez sorry i can't do this ah i i um the budget, ah, money, something happened. You're you're not a finance guy, so you won't understand. I'm like, I worked in investment banking, and she's like, she's like, <laughs> like, ah, you know, something happened. We can offer you a thousand dollars. I'm like, bye. And she's like, wait a minute, we got a camera crew waiting around the corner. I'm like, twenty thousand dollars. And she's like, no. I'm like, okay. So it's just wasting my time, really. Um, you know, John is trying to screw me. I screw them. It's a constant battle. You know what I mean? It's my own. Israel versus Palestine. Yeah, it's like my own struggle. I don't think you're supposed to say that. <laughs> not right I, now. I, Do it. making another another joke. I, I'm not meant to. Speak- I don't I'm know. Speaking of Israel Palestine, do you even like have any like politics or anything, or is it just like it just is is yeah exploring? So, so this is an official Lord Miles tour guide statement, a company statement. So this is very official. I don't like how they turned Gaza. Gaza into Zaza, you know, it's a little bit cringe how they're doing that. And I wish they would stop and hold hands and start dancing in circles with the sunset going behind them. But um, I do think it belongs to the British. So maybe people haven't seen this angle. The British ones owned it. Just give it back to us and we'll turn it into like a. Yeah, we really need, we need to start giving you guys back things because look at how well it's all gone. Look at it all. I think. My, this is my geopolit. This is my. If I was in charge of the world, this is how in charge of the Western world. This is what I would do personally. So I'm scrolling out, and this is how I would deal with the geopolitics. So first, as the United States, I would annex Canada because that place sucks. Correct. Yeah. I would do that and take over Greenland and just start, go get give some Greenland people hair dryers and start start melting the ice fast, and and we'll just get like loads of minerals from there. I would also invade Mexico. Uh, was it Guatemala, Nicaragua, all these other places, all the way down to the Darien Gap near Panama, and just be like, "Hey, this is our new, this is our new border." Um, you know, mm-hmm. we're gonna turn Mexico into like you know the new China with um, mass production, cutting all contracts with China. 
do it like an ambitious five-year economic plan because that's always worked for five-year economic plans they're mm-hmm. flawless yeah so i'll make the dairy and get up like the border and just set up centuries like it's like a video game just saying yeah, if you try and get across you just get like nay um so that's mm-hmm. pretty based and also start like invading random african countries because who's gonna stop us really it's like uh, it's like it's like who's gonna stop us from invading the gambia it's like it's mm-hmm. a nobody you know nobody the gambia no yeah i would just i would just I'd not even gonna make news Mm-mm. Yeah, I would also invade like all the little islands that are south of um, you know, North America. Like, I would invade the Bahamas because I just can. Like, who's who's gonna protest it? It's like, don't we, you know- guys already own the Bahamas? Isn't that a, aren't the most of the islands down there? Don't they all belong to the British anyway? I don't know. We need more. We need more okay. islands. You know what I mean? Like, I I would just I would also take more Falkland islands. I would just build yeah, islands. No, no, no. <laughs> oh my god! He got he got he got, he got too personal. He so, got I, would build, I would build an island straight off, um, like the capital of Argentina, like as close as I can to Buenos Be- Be- Aires. Mm. Uh, I can't say it. Yeah, Aires, Buenos Aires. Uh, mm. British accent. I've got a list. I'll build. You know how um your capital is right next to the ocean. I'll build. I'll build a little artificial island, Chinese style, right in the middle of the ocean view, and just put a British flag on it just to piss off the people. Mm-hmm. Not not as like a geopolitical strategy, but just just to fuck the people. Just to uh, piss off Argentinians a little bit more. Exactly. I would also nuke the mm-hmm. Panama Canal just because I can build a new one um, mm-hmm. somewhere else. You know what I mean? I would just I would just cause geopolitical mm-hmm. mess, but it would actually kind of work better than the current government and the current world structure. I would also do what MacArthur did and just nuke the Chinese North Korean border. Just cut them off completely, you know. All I mean, of I mean, this just to tell us that you have no geopolitical background. <laughs> it's like I, I don't know why. It's like I'm befriending the entire governments. Can you say that? But it's like yeah. I feel like when you have when you're like a person like you and like really well traveled, your politics almost disappear because you're like No, I become the- way more based on my politics like trust me everyone goes i travel and like i've opened up my heart to the world and like oh my god i like love everyone no no i i'm like the uk needs to get rid of it. all these people bloody hell we, we they're not coming here <laughs> oh no I'm like, I <laughs> this country oh no 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 um yeah i've i've become more biased in every single way it's like i've learned all the niche hatred from all these countries and incorporated it into my philosophy. So do you, have you become a self-hating Brit from all the hatred? No, 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 that's like really cult. I joke about hating England, but the whole ambition is I hate England so much. I want to expand the empire so England could become nice. So it's like, it's it's like, do you ever go to just Google maps and go, how many true Brit at heart? Yeah. Yeah. So I'll tell you what a bunch of autistic boys do. Uh, when they're meant to be going out on Fridays. A bunch of lads and I get together and we just look on map, Google Maps and I go, you see this island right here? There's 1,500 people on this island and there's like, what, five guns apparently. How many of us would need to go there to take over this island? And would NATO act on it? You know what I mean? I, I would just ask, I would I would play um, the World Bank and all these other places just to kind of get the island myself. I'll be like, hey, yeah, we need to install a new bank here like we, we need the Rothschilds to open a bank on this island immediately and to be fair there, there are no synagogues on this island what's up with that and we'd also say we need to start printing debt money we need to start printing debt money right now and then all the international community would be like wow so true brother you you are truly the uh, true owners of this island you know you just have to play the geopolitics of it all um it's like if I was risk averse I wouldn't tell you my exact coordinates right now are latitude 52.7420 Two nine longitude minus one point three <laughs> five five seven two seven. You know what I mean? It's like the end I feel like I could just listen to you talk uh for to, and just like forever. I I, yeah. I have a question for you. <laughs> I have a question. <laughs> so yes. so if you whatever whatever interviews you've done right with maybe a couple of different news outlets and whatnot, um they obviously would have probably tried to, as the serious journalists that they are, right, tried to find, you know, a serious angle or whatever. What's the what's the funniest interview or, or the like the most ridiculous interview that you've had? Yeah, um, I, for legal reasons, I can't say the exact name of the journalist or the, the uh, publisher, that's fine. but I, I convinced a major a journalistic institution that I was actually Israeli dual citizen. 
and I was just traveling to try and create peace in the Middle East um, to bring back home knowledge and bridge, bridge the gap. And they actually believe Bridge it. the gap is when, when you say those three words, it's game over. Bridge the yeah, gap, exactly. you're, you're the smartest person in the world. Bridging the gap. Bridging the gap. I was like, whoa. He said bridging oh, yeah. the gap. Whoa. He He's said like, bridging he, the gap. Big, wow. Yeah, exactly. No one's ever tried <laughs> This guy, this guy, wow, wow, bridging the gap. Selfless, Genius. selfless Genius. humanitarian. Exactly, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm totally a humanitarian. You know, it's like, um, I consider myself human, close enough. Yeah, yeah. If you're, I mean, it's a given. So where, so where are we going next? Um, well, to be fair, I'm in uh, your place, but after that, I think, we could, um, <laughs> I think. <laughs> I think uh, I haven't seen women in eight months. I'm sorry, guys. Come on, uh, I gotta have a bit of fun. One of our, um, one of I think one of your. If, if I'm going too far, just tell me to stop. I'll, no, I'll I think the first interview you do, you know, looking at a woman on camera. Well, one of the subscribers ooh, is. Ooh. I think it's one of your subscribers. He's upset. He's like, he posted two women, two minutes of women talking after he was in Taliban captivity, and now he does a podcast with two women. <laughs> So no. I guess he's so disappointed in you. Look, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. I guess because you were on Tate, so now you're not supposed to do interviews with women. How did your interview with Tate go? I watched a little bit of it. Yeah, sure. We go way back, to be fair. I remember when Tate was at like 40,000 followers. He DM'd me on Twitter and was like, hey, would do a shout out for me. And I was like, yeah, sure, man. He paid me. I was like, yeah, I funded a trip, no problem. It was like one brand or something. It was solid back then. Then we met her once in London in a scar lounge. And I it was this hotel that charges fifteen thousand dollars a night. So I turn up wearing like, you know, the cheapest it's like Walmart stuff. I was wearing like a Walmart t shirt and jeans. Mm -hmm. And then I walk in, they're like, Oh, are you the U Breach driver? That he like he's delivering an order on. Like now I'm here to see Tate. And they're like, Wow, he's so rich, he dresses poor. Wow. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, this, this like, must yeah. be, he must be a billionaire so, so true did, yeah. you go to, did you go to romania for that interview oh yeah he was like he was like flying me out he was like i'm gonna fly you out from uh dubai miles if you want but i was like yeah apparently the phone office like miles you can we need we need to do a check on you miles you can't just start yeah. traveling stop it stop it miles i'm like having trouble yeah did, having trouble with one did day you like romania yeah, it was chill to be fair. I, my wallet was safe, so I was kind of amazed by that. Um, but it was good. I've been to Romania before when I passed through Ukraine, lovely little holiday on the front lines, too. Uh, Russian L's right there. And then I, um, I, I've been to Ukraine a, f a few times, mm -hmm. then I had to go through Romania, too. So I only saw the countryside, but this time I was going through the city center, and it's beautiful to be fair, but it's a very stark contrast. So you're walking through the very nice areas with beautiful people, and yeah. everyone's dressed up very nice. There's touristy areas, very high end places. I mean, you turn the corner, it's just some grandma begging in front of a dilapidated house. So mm -hmm. it's like, it's very, I feel like it's a little bit, they're trying to cover up some stuff, um, or just some insane poverty going on, which is very sad, but. Everyone seems quite happy compared to the English anyway, so I'm sure they're doing quite well. <laughs> yeah, you guys are pretty miserable. Yeah. Where yeah, has been, where's your favorite place that you've been? Um, your mother's house? No, I'm joking. Uh, where's the um <laughs> <laughs> I'm really pushing my luck here, aren't I? I honestly have to say the United States. Really? Wow. Oh, yeah, honestly, your terrible. soy slop is amazing, man. Oh Did you say soy sauce? Soy sauce is really no, good. No, soy slop, soy slop. I can't say I can't say the you know the G where I heard last say with the S. I can't believe soy... you chose the United States. Which part? It's like uh, I went down the entire uh, East Coast. It was lovely to be fair. I started pretty much in the nice area of New York, um, like near Riverhead and stuff, and went all okay. the way down. Texas. Um, I was gonna go down to uh, Florida, but another time. I've been around the area. It's beautiful. You guys have great food. Everyone's very friendly. If you smile at someone in London, they're like, "Why are you smiling at me? What? what you gonna kill me? You want to kill me? Why are you smiling? <laughs> kill my dog? You gonna kill my family?" And, it, and you know, if you smile at someone in in America, it's like, oh, it's like they start talking to you. It's great. I love talking to people. Everybody's yeah. on antidepressants here. So, of course, they're all saying hi and smiling. It's just a, everybody's on SSRI. I don't understand the whole I don't the idea of antidepressants. Just, like, sort your life out. You don't need a pill. You know what I mean? Um, it's, like, for 99.5%. That's an Andrew Tate take if I ever heard one. <laughs> it's, no, it's, Andrew true, it's like, it's like I, had, I had a mother who had major depressive disorder. And she would never work. And she got offered jobs. And she was on benefits. 
and she was you know, she was always stressed out about paying the mortgage because obviously she couldn't afford it and the bank was going to foreclose on the house and she would just drink all day i'm like hmm i was like you know i'm, I'm not a psychologist but maybe if you don't drink two bowls of wine a night you might feel you might feel quite nice. You might you might feel a little bit better, you know. And then she was like, "Yeah, you don't understand anything." And then the psychologist to her said the exact same thing, and she was like, "Oh, yeah." And then, yeah, it's, it's this type of thing too. It's like you don't need you don't need this stuff. You just saw your life out. It's like you haven't ever worked a job. You wake up at three p.m. every single day. You do not have a schedule. You do not work. You do not exercise. You do not go outside. Maybe some of those things might help out. You know what I mean? Like I'm not saying you know start changing your life overnight, but go outside maybe it was like as soon as you have a child i think your own personal problem should mostly go second or third hand because if you got a child the child comes first and i remember like i was on the weekend at like 5 p.m my mother's still asleep and i'm like i'm eight years old i'm cooking my food this is a bit ridiculous to be fair i even thought i was bad back then so i i oh, no know one thing you can cook then makes mm. sense i started cooking at early age too so i'm a great cook now how come you're a great cook uh, tell me sorry I know we can't go into that story. No, no, no. To to get into personal here, Lord Miles, I just met you an hour ago. <laughs> well, you say, well, we're going to come to Argentina and establish islands. She's and literally everything. right next to you. She's in Spain. Go find her. I I'm going yeah, I, I'm going currently to live in Spain. I'm going to the airport to Portugal in six hours. So we'll meet up. You know, good oh. stuff. <laughs> what are you doing in Portugal? So. My friend uh, is basically like, Miles, we want to celebrate you getting out, but you can't come to New York. I've got a bunch of friends who want to meet you. Come down to Lisbon. We've got a nice house rented out. You can stay for a week or five nights or however long you want. Just talk to my friends. We'll chill together. I'm like, yeah, for someone who travels a lot, I'm pasty as hell. You know what I mean? So true. I'm... Very true. Yeah, exactly. And to be fair, you know, uh, for some reason... Do you burn like, even, but... even if you put sunscreen on? Do you, do you, do you burn? I've never put sunscreen on in my life. I don't see the point of it. It seems cringe, you know. Um, it's like, why would I put something that looks like a uh, male, you know, uh, seed on my on my body? It just looks a bit, it's a bit dodgy. Um, Protecting I your put... skin is super cringe, man. <clears throat> yeah, super camp, isn't that what Brits say? It's very camp. No, I just call <laughs> I just call them cigarettes. You know, we have a certain word for cigarettes in England. It's called uh, f- 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 uh never mind. Anyway, um. Is I'm just popping down there, just chilling. It's actually my first holiday in like two and a half years, so it's actually a holiday from my holiday in Afghanistan. So I'm gonna need a holiday from the holiday. It makes perfect sense. So what are you doing in Spain? Uh, I, I I live here. I'm sorry to hear. I live here and uh, uh, yeah, not yeah, much so more. I make, so I heard Gibraltar is very nice. Oh, is that wait? That's English. Why don't you own all your land in Spain? That's kind of funny. Listen, I'm I'm just living here. I'm I'm leaving next year. Uh, can't can't leave any sooner, to be honest. Where are you leaving to? Uh, moving back to Brazil. Oh, I went to Sao Paulo. It's amazing. You went to the worst part of Brazil. Well, I went to Take <laughs> Island. You know, you know. Uh, what's the worst? Um, I forgot the name of it now. It's uh, you know that island off the coast of Sao Paulo where it's um full of snakes. Uh, no, maybe Ilha, uh, Ilha, Ilha Grande. Grande. Something like that. Ilha Grande. Yeah, something like that. It's like um, it's called Snake Island. It's off the coast of Sao Paulo, and it's like the most dangerous island, second most dangerous island in the world. The first being England, of course. Makes perfect sense that you went there. No, uh, I mean Brazil is great, but Sao Paulo sucks, bro. You need to expand your horizons in Brazil. Oh, are you are you inviting me? Um, yeah. I can. No. Yeah, no. This, this way I went. <laughs> yeah, you can't see that. Yeah, it's like. Is that just like... a snake? Okay. No, no, the see, see the words, see? I, I okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 I'm a little bit blind. That's too far away from me. Yeah, I can't read or write either. I went to public, I went to um, a normal school in England, so I can't read or write either. So one struggle, you know? I mean, no, because oh, yeah. I can't read or write. I just can't see. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's too bad, too. Um, we got got a few questions somebody that says yorkshire is the best part of england i don't think that's true it's like it's like saying your your shit was the best shit of the day it's like it's all shit in the end it's like saying what milwaukee or something is the best part of the u.s you know what i mean yeah 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 have you ever ever been to tashkent have you ever been to tashkent tashkent no what's tashkent it's uh it's the capital of Uzbekistan, I want 
I say? Oh, fuck is open. You know, there's something in there. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've seen it now. He just, he just pulled up a Google map. Yeah, literally behind me, it's literally Google Maps. That's why that's my I'm just constantly looking at stuff. So to be fair, in two weeks, my next trip to Afghanistan does involve driving back from Afghanistan to England because I can only bring so much Taliban merch with me on the plane. And for some reason, due to sanctions, you can't ship it through Turkey or Pakistan. Why? So driving, yeah, so driving home would be solid. It's a great idea. Nothing go wrong. Um, so mm-hmm. I might pass through Uzbekistan and go to... Uh, Tash- Tashkent, you know, Tashkent. That's 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 the next hot place, guys. Tashkent. Actually, Tashkent is 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 like a really nice place. It's all like built up and up and coming. Yeah, up and coming. So true. Um, <laughs> all right, tell us what's yeah, you next. Up and so coming, we can yeah. end this episode, and you can go do the eight other podcasts you have for the day. What's next? Well, well sorry, my my business is actually successful. I don't know if you know about that. <laughs> No, I have no idea about a successful business. None. I have no idea about a successful business. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's like sure, sure. So um how how was your um how's your how's your business doing? How's um how's revenue this month? How's uh how are the numbers? I didn't realize that I was gonna have to do like a financial breakdown. I'm actually I'm also I'm also auditing you, so I'm I'm the person <clears throat> I'm I'm a special investigations lawyer. The person who doesn't pay their taxes is auditing me. Exactly. It's like I know what to look for, you know? All right. It makes perfect sense uh, that he would, he would ask. He's an investment ex-investment banker, you know? Exactly. Ex-investment banker, current Taliban operative, going to go get us cheetahs. We have to give you our sizes. I mean, to be fair, yeah. Just um, what size are you guys in the U.S.? Seven and a half women's. I, I, okay. I honestly don't know. I think know. that's five and, a half men, you, five and a half men's, I think. So you got clown feet then. Okay, fair enough. No, um, small. Okay, so you got like midget feet. Okay, that's pretty funny. You got little stumps there. You're, like, mm-hmm. You walk like this, you know? Yeah, like you, a hobbit. Yeah, like a hobbit. You need to leave like circles in the ground when you walk. That's cool. Mm-hmm. That's cool. I can find you some cheetahs. Um, yeah, it's, it's cool. Um, only $1,000. Um, I'll give you a discount I'll, because you could give me the pound. I'll give you another pound in return, like a hundred percent return on your investment. That's that's big. So well, I'll no, give you, you, I give you a pound. You can refurbish a house in either Greece, Italy, or, or wherever, and then. Well, I don't uh, like. I don't like the Greeks. Want... They're pretty much Turkish. I don't like the Turkish because they're Greeks. They're just hairy guys. Ta- like... Take your pick. There's some in Austria for a pound going. You know, you... whichever. Oh, some in Austria. Italy I like Austria. Austria. Mm, Italy's very. Give you a house for a pound. I mean, I just want my return on investment. Yeah, I'm. I'm kind of. I'm kind of a northern Italy supremacist. I will not go to South Italy because they're pretty much from Libya at this point. You know, I, I'm. There's. This. It's just two different countries. Um, North Italy. I'll get you a house point. in North Italy. No problem. Yeah, I'm just I'll gonna get, get one in the mountain. I'll get you three. But oh, once it's refurbished, yeah, I, I, I want. I want. Them. We're moving a bit oh. quick. We don't want to buy a house together. You know, first we got like me. No, no, home. it's just an investment for me. I yeah, don't think and I oh, it, I'm not an investment. Okay. <laughs> I'm not like someone you could buy for Christmas. Okay. So you like, can, you can refurbish it, do all the work. And then once the house is really nice, I'm going to want my cut. Your cut? Like a pound? <laughs> I can give you- no, the cut will be us <laughs> living in the houses. We want the houses. That's the cut. <laughs> Or like you sell are... the house and I want half a million for it. I think that's a fair deal, to be honest. Because I believed fair... in you and I gave you a pound when you didn't have a pound. So That's pretty that's big. Fair. The, the pound I didn't have, it, it got here quite quickly. So thank you for that. Um, yeah. yeah. Wow. So um, um, basically, yeah, I, I don't know about the whole money situation. We're kind of screwed on that. Um, I don't know what we could do. <laughs> we could put something together. Honestly, if we pay the mob some money, we could figure something out. I've got some actually. I got some mob contacts in northern, it's southern Italy. To be fair, they're quite chill. Um, I got some in Brazil, so yeah, make something. How up. many? Like a Brazilian. All right, before we all get arrested, um, <laughs> thanks everyone for joining us. It's been an amazing episode of the DDG Politics. Podcast. I was just getting started. <laughs> you guys, you guys have to do something else. Oh wait, we're live. <laughs> what are we live? Crap. Damn, did, did I they, thought there was a the Zoom call. Damn. Yeah, we just had a business conference meeting. Yeah. Give me a pound. Oh, this was meant to be a, a secret, guys. We weren't meant to find yeah. out. We broadcasted it to the world. Don't let MI6 find out about this. Oh, no. <laughs> well, the journalists are coming. 
Sorry. Wrap, wrap us up, Miles. Take us out. Yeah, exactly. So if you want to find me, you know my coordinates, <laughs> but if you want to find me on social media, uh, just search for Lord Miles. I'm really retarded and autistic, I, I honestly think. I took an autism test and I said I wasn't autistic, which means I definitely am. I'm just told yeah. so I know how to trick the test. So I'm like, I've looped around, you know what I mean? But it seems very good. Uh, next next episode will be me with you guys, both of them together, both of you. So we're going to like, link up. We're going to become best friends, of course. Um, I was convinced you were a dude, by the way. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, which I, I still am. You just got a oh, week. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we've had, lovely, we've had a lovely, civilized talk. We've kept on topic and I've shared the conversation with you guys. So I've obviously not rambled or anything like that. You know, I've done really good. Go follow me on social media because. <laughs> Because I'm Lord Miles and I'm going to cause some diplomatic, international diplomatic incidents. You don't want to miss this one, guys. Um, you know, hostage situations, me. Uh, next wars, I'm going to be in all of them, both sides, actually. I'm going to be fine myself. You know, it's like an eternal struggle. Um, goofiest place in the world, I'll be there. And to be fair, it's all going to be on this news network, uh, this, this podcast we've got. So I've actually just bought out this uh podcast by the way I'll yes we're now owned by lord miles so catch us on the <laughs> next episode of the newly the under new management dd geopolitics i think tuesday we talk about iran and wednesday we talk about propaganda you see so, so you went for a run iran not iran oh. iran oh yeah yeah you gotta you gotta say it you gotta tell them because they get mad iran. i'm just gonna call it um er and that I was pissing you it, off. Over. Call it Persia. <laughs> just, just call it. Um, just call it like. Oh, is that not like just like a, a small or a bigger Iraq or something like that? That would just really piss them off. Oh my god, um, you're gonna get everybody upset yeah, now. Yeah, people, people in Tehran are like, "Hey, we could be a major powerhouse in the Middle East, but our government kind of suppresses the whole economy because they're fucking stupid." Um, and you know they're they're being screwed over by other countries cutting off their main water supply as they watch Iraq die at the same time. Iran could be a major global power, and pretty much most of the country is becoming Christian now. But we'd have to ignore that and obviously keep pushing our people into economic um, you know, stagnation. Lovely country, but to be fair, we love kidnapping foreigners and just cutting diplomatic ties and digging ourselves into further sanctions. Are you Great. talking about the United States? No, no, it's Iran. Are you talking about Iran the UK? <laughs> yeah, Iran. You, I, Iran has uh, joined the UK. One struggle, brother. You know. Mm, mm. Anyway, but yeah. Not, we not Wales, though. Not Wales. So true. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I'm not like Welsh to be fair, because they kind of fuck sheep, and I'm more kind of into the. Um, I'm more into like bulls. You know, I'm kind of like you know Spanish like that. I like I like bulls, but not sheep. You know? All right, that's been great. <laughs> Catch us on the next episode where we don't talk about bestiality. Thank you so much. It's been a great episode. We'll catch you next time. Area, hurry up. Press, push this.